Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night, about 9.20 p.m. That's California time here. May 15, 2025 is the date. Latest activity shows a 3.1 here across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, about the only earthquake out here right now. One earthquake earlier, it looks like, around the South Sandwich Trench. All right, let's take a look here. What's going on across the West Coast here? Got uh, still quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up out here. Um, let me bring up the normal map here real quick across the west coast uh, inland movement uh, starting to show some signs of earthquake activity here with a 2.5 map and above showing a bunch of quakes out here in idaho uh, 2.9 there across the bay area this afternoon early evening i should say around the bay area um watching things closely out here you guys should see the trimmer map this evening check this out real quick cascadia trimmer resulting in about 477 epicenters there mainly again across the southern end of the Cascadia uh, that uh, well I don't know about day number seven or eight in a row of trimmer activity let's go back to the last month here I guess we need to include the last few days here previous to the month uh, to the week to get the trimmer count uh, it's going up and up and up 5138 epicenters of trimmer across the Cascadia subduction zone, mainly here across the southern end. That includes the Northern California, Southern Oregon region. Uh, it, uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity out there, or uh, trimmer activity, I should say, stirring up underneath this region. No resulting earthquake activity yet across this area, but uh, we can see some here in any time, I think. I pulled up the uh, historical model here of large earthquakes in the area, 6.0. Actually, I pulled up... Uh, I think it was about 6.5 and above here for this area, not including newer activity down south here. But a lot of times here during trimmer events, uh, we can get uh, some earthquake activity that happens uh, even below the trimmer, a little bit deeper than where the trimmer occurs, such as these earthquakes up in Washington uh, that happened back in, uh, well, the last one was 2011, 51 kilometers deep underneath this area. Now, the trimmer activity normally occurs about 35 to 45 kilometers here underneath this area. At times, we get uh, some st stuck areas downstream, even further down there underneath this area, and they can produce some big earthquakes. Uh, so that's always a possibility as well. Our last one was over you know, 24 years ago. So yeah, maybe coming up on a time period here where we could see some activity or we could see you know, a big one out here. That's a the great nine-pointer, 1700 earthquake out there across the Cascadia subduction zone. But uh, I, I would like to get my hands on some trimmer activity uh, studies previous 1700 earthquake. I'd like to see what the trimmer activity did years, months, weeks leading up to this event. I think if we had that knowledge, we could pretty much predict or at least give a good forecast when the next Cascadia subduction zone earthquake is going to take place. But we don't have access to it, and there's no way of knowing. That's why I like to pay attention there uh, to the trimmer activity that occurs underneath this region, and it's been quite amplified here. If we look at the all-data map here, our last event of similar magnitude to what we're seeing right now was back uh, towards the end of last year. Uh, and shortly thereafter... We had that seven-pointer stir up down here across the southern end, just off the Cascadia, right about the uh, Mendocino Triple Point boundary down here off Northern California. That seven-pointer stirred up a uh, decent-sized earthquake. Felt it down here in Chico. Um, so it will be interesting to see if we get any resulting earthquake activity from all of this trimmer movement that's taken place out here for sure uh, because it's building. It's definitely uh, adding further strain out there, bending the plate, so to speak, across the Cascadia fold and thrust belt. All right, Northern California, quiet for now. The Bay Area, there's that 2.9. It looks like that stirred up on the, uh, maybe just off the northern end of the Calaveras Fault Zone or potentially in between the Hayward and the Calaveras Fault. That earthquake outside of Alamo, underneath automatic status, so it hasn't even been reviewed here by a seismologist. It's rather interesting there. Uh, but it does look like it's a legit earthquake. It was felt across the area, Berkeley, Concord, and whatnot. So this could get revised to a different location 
um, presuming someone may finally look it over as far as the data goes. Southern California, a couple of earthquakes out here in the last hour. Nothing above 2.5 down here for now. Mainly smaller microquake activity. Nevada is still rocking and rolling out there. Quite a few quakes out there in northern Nevada. Twos and, well, mostly threes out there. Last one was about 5 o'clock this morning. So, um, Idaho still showing some movement out here across the Sawtooth Vault system. A 3.1, fairly recent earthquake. The Yellowstone National Park here. That, uh, let me pull that up real quick. Uh, they had a little bit of earthquake activity out here today across Maple Creek. And it looks as though there's maybe a little bit of earthquake activity happening around Mary Lake as well. Uh, it's going to be some of these spikes here, a couple, a couple of earthquakes. It could be just, uh, maybe picking up some of this earthquake activity that's actually happening back over here not a huge swarm you know it's this is actually a, a very light swarm compared to what we've seen in the past uh, so there's probably a good I don't know 30 earthquakes or so out here all of these are below the 2.5 uh, threshold the largest one was a 2.0 that happened this morning the smaller quakes they have yet to fill in there across the uh, the earthquake map beautiful state of kansas out there north of wichita outside of uh let's see what this little town is harrington 3.6 let's see anybody feel that earthquake looks like a few folks felt it outside of junction city is junction city as well i am not for sure uh if there's any gas and oil fields out there but let's just double check here see what we got I don't see anything of uh, any mention of any oil fields out there. A lot of times here on, on the uh, maps of the show, the name of the oil fields, but I'm not seeing anything. Uh, the U.S. hazard map has Kansas mainly outside of the hazard zones, but occasionally uh, they do get some earthquakes up here. That's one of the more larger ones we've seen in a little while. In the last 30 days, one previous earthquake down here, a little bit further to the south, for a 2.6. Uh, New Madrid seismic zone. There's that one earthquake from this morning. Nothing new to report there for now. Across the rest of the globe here. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, earthquake 3D model. Some activity stirring up down south here. Noted on the uh, EMSC model. A couple of threes. Actually, it looks like a 4.1 down here just south of uh, uh, into the Baja California region. New Zealand, threes, nothing big going on there for now. Quiet zone is Papua New Guinea air eastward. Pretty quiet conditions out there for now. Got some further deep activity across the Izu Trench. Look at that 4.7 here. That uh, obviously going to be adding further strain, potentially out here across the northwestern edge of the Filipino plate. But also at the same time, uh, these deeper quakes tend to add strain up at the subduction zone level. Uh, where the locked area tends to sit and it's been somewhat active down there across this deeper area So watch regions uh, Upstream here, but you know can't you cannot forget this area back over here the Nankai Trop definitely uh, primed for some big earthquake activity uh, Let's see aside from uh, typical movement out there across well Turkey had a five-pointer earlier this uh, I think that was early this morning Nothing new to report out there. A couple smaller quakes in the region. 4.7 out here across the rift boundary. At, uh, out across the Tanzania area. There's a major rift zone. Uh, eventually, uh, this area here, I believe it's going to be this section right here, is going to be pulling away from the main continent, creating a new sea out here. Uh, that's a long ways down the road, though, but uh, it will happen. So occasionally we do get these earthquakes stirring up out there across the rift boundaries. Space weather activity, still watching a, a number, well, one main sunspot, 4087 out here. Let's see what we got here for complexity models. Uh, there we go. Still got that uh, little area back here in one region and a couple more very small areas of complexity there, making this region 
a somewhat dynamic sunspot area for some stronger flaring. Um, also newer area, it looks like across the uh, northeastern limb of the sun. We'll watch that as well, but two main areas to watch for some stronger flaring. Um, looks like there's another one back over here as well, down south. This one's currently flaring. That's that newer area. Looks like a little bit of sea flare activity right now. Unnamed, not named yet, but uh, looking at the magnetogram here, shows a little bit of uh, development there around that core. Continue to watch that area for some uh, flaring. Overall, right now, flare threat remains elevated, about 30% chance for X flare, M flare at 65% chance. Proton events there around 10% or so. Uh, they did add a G1 class storm here to the forecast on the May 18th time period. That's due to a coronal hole uh, that is facing us. Takes a couple days for that high speed solar wind stream to arrive on Earth, to, to arrive to Earth. And if everything plays out right, we'll see some aurors uh, around that time period, which is scheduled for the UTC time of May 18th. But uh, no guarantee. Last time that was a complete dud. We'll see what happens with that. All right, folks, um, uh, some tornado activity up there around Wisconsin today, I believe. Uh, check out the storm reports for uh, 515. Oh, yeah, number of tornadoes, 14 reports of some tornado activity out there. They were expecting some severe weather today, and it looks like that did not. Um, well, that, that came to pass for sure. Wisconsin, Minnesota area, Illinois region looks like possible tornado. Uh, a lot of wind and some hail threats out there as well. That will continue through the evening. I think they're still seeing uh, some decent storms through the uh, through the night right now. Weather radar shows that uh, low pressure system here stirring up that band of thunderstorms and whatnot. That's a lot of lightning. Uh, don't plan on getting any sleep out there if, you, if you're in this area tonight. That's quite a bit. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Keep an eye there on the Pacific Northwest. A lot of trimmer activity stirring up up there. Um, who knows what's going to happen, right? A couple earthquakes down in Anza. There within the last few minutes or so. That would be uh, around this area. What's going on up here? Fontana area. Those may be those couple quakes showing up. That uh, not really associated with any fault systems out there. Oh, just kind of keep an eye on things. Just be safe out there, folks. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning. It is Friday. Tomorrow's Friday. All right. Made it to the weekend again. We'll see you guys here soon.